the discourse on method begins, good sense is the best distributed thing in the world. For everyone thinks themselves to be so well endowed with it that even those who are the most difficult to please in everything else are not at all wont to desire more of it than they have. And of course it goes on from there. You'll have noticed at this point that Descartes loves a run-on sentence. He will write very, very long sentences. So let's just take a look at the first part of that first sentence. Good sense is the best distributed thing in the world, Descartes says. So what exactly does that mean? Here is where we'll have to pay close attention to what Descartes means by good sense. He's not just saying uh, common sense. He's not just saying showing good judgment. Unlike the ancient philosophy we read, where they are drawing on uh, common sense words or everyday used words, Descartes is going to define a specific philosophical term here for us. Descartes tells us that good sense is synonymous with reason, and that reason is the power of judging well and distinguishing the true from the false. Reason and good sense are a power, a capacity, an ability that you have. This is not how well you do it, it's what you have to apply. And so Descartes is claiming that good sense, this ability that you have to distinguish good from bad, or right from wrong, or true from false, is naturally equal in all people. Now, about 150 years after Descartes writes this, someone else in very different circumstances is going to be able to write, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that blah, 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 blah. Now, of course, even when Thomas Jefferson writes those words, they're not exactly true. Right, first of all, uh, in the late 18th century, it's certainly not the case that everyone holds this to just be a self-evident truth that everyone's created equal. And of course, even as Jefferson is writing this, you have a country full of women and non-white people saying, hey, excuse me, everybody? And Jefferson's saying, shh, shh, we'll get to you later, maybe. But at least Jefferson can get away with this rhetorical flourish, right? We, uh, as in the people who count as us, we hold these truths to be just self-evident. I'm not going to bother explaining to you or arguing with you or trying to show you that all people are equal. We just take this for granted. Back in Descartes' day, you could not get away with a rhetorical flourish like that. You can't just take that for granted. Which is why Descartes is going to go on in the rest of the sentence to offer you an argument. Uh, pay attention. This argument is sort of half tongue-in-cheek, half serious. But Descartes says we have reason to believe that all people are created equal. Think about any child's birthday party you've ever been to. You cut that cake just as neatly and cleanly and evenly as you possibly can, but no matter what, you give out those pieces of cake, you've got that one little kid saying, oh, he got a bigger piece than me, right? We are never easy to please in things that get distributed. There's always someone who thinks, oh, I want more, or oh, I got too much. Think about height or strength or beauty or etc 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 and yet Descartes says uh, good sense is not one of these things everyone thinks that they've got a, a pretty good above average amount of good sense now of course we've got a bit of a problem because it's obvious to you it's obvious to me it's obvious to most people that there are just some real idiots out there and this is just it. Uh, if you go and you talk to one of those idiots, you can say, hey, listen, uh, there are some real idiots in the world, right? They're going to say, oh, yeah, there are some real idiots in the world. And you can ask, are you one of those idiots? And they'll say, no, 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 me, I'm, I'm about average, right? And I find it actually works in the opposite direction as well. Pick someone who is an absolute genius. Find a genius in the world and ask them, hey, there are some real geniuses in the world, aren't there? And they'll say, oh, yes, there really are. And you'll ask, are you one of those geniuses? And they'll say, nah, me, I'm, I'm about average, right? But if Descartes is going to claim that we all have an equal amount of good sense, then this issue of those idiots out there 
is going to have to be explained. In other words, why is it then that it just seems to us like some people are smarter than others? If we all have equal good sense, then how is it that we come to different opinions or different ideas? Well, Descartes will tell us, the diversity of our opinions does not arise from the fact that some people are more reasonable than others, but solely from the fact that we lead our thoughts along different paths and do not take the same things into consideration. We apply our reason differently and therefore come to different conclusions. We all have equal capacity, but we use it differently. And so when it comes to this issue of there being people in the world who just seem like they don't have the same amount of good sense that you and I do, Descartes' claim is going to be, well, we just apply ourselves to different things, we just think along different paths, we use different methods to try to figure out what's right and what's wrong, what's true and what's false. But here's the question, what difference does it make what explanation we adopt? In other words, uh, what difference does it make whether we all have equal good sense but just apply ourselves differently, apply that sense differently, or saying that we just have unequal amounts of good sense, that some of us just are more reasonable than others? Well, I want you to stop and think about what it might mean to claim, to argue the opposite of what Descartes is saying. In other words, what would it mean if some people are more reasonable than others? I want you to think about training your dog. If you have a dog, you know that there are certain things that you just don't want your dog to do. Things like, say, use your living room as a toilet. Now, are there good reasons why we shouldn't use the living room as a toilet? Yes, there absolutely are. It's not just a matter of, well, that color doesn't match my drapes. There are some very good reasons here. Uh, diseases and smell and hygiene, etc., etc., etc. But I want to know, do you bother to explain that to your dog? And of course you don't, right? Uh, you just punish your dog for doing the wrong thing, you reward your dog for doing uh, the right thing, and in that way you train your dog, you just train his behavior. But why don't you explain to your dog all of the reasons why we shouldn't use the living room as a toilet, all of the reasons why we should go outside for that kind of thing? Well, here's the thing, it's not just a matter of your dog not being able to speak English. Your dog doesn't have the capacity to think about these things. And if your dog doesn't have the capacity to understand these things, it's not just that he doesn't happen to, it's that he can't. In that sense, there's really nothing for you to do except punish him when he steps out of line, reward the correct behavior, and make sure you have him trained. In 1634, three years before Descartes writes this book, Galileo got hauled in front of the Spanish Inquisition. Now, why was Galileo being pulled in front of the Spanish Inquisition? Well, in large part, it's because Galileo had come to the conclusion that the Earth revolves around the Sun and not vice versa. Of course, Galileo took the additional step of saying, well, if the earth revolves around the sun, then this means the church is misinterpreting the Bible, because, of course, the church teaches uh, that passage in the book of Jericho to mean that the sun is moving around the earth. And it's really that extra claim, that the church is misinterpreting the Bible, that got Galileo in trouble. But here's the important thing. When Galileo got it wrong, the church hauled him in in front of the Inquisition, and they gave him two options. You can either take it back, or you can die. And Galileo said, I take it back, never mind. And so they just put him under house arrest for the rest of his life. Now, again, this happens and Descartes flips out. Descartes has been reading Galileo's work approvingly. He thinks Galileo is onto something. And when Galileo gets in trouble and then takes it back, Descartes gets worried. But more importantly is this. If we have unequal amounts of good sense, then it may turn out there's really nothing wrong with the church's approach here. If the church is staffed by people who are more reasonable than Galileo, then Galileo is incapable of understanding how he got it wrong. They just need to punish him, just set him right and get him back on track. If Descartes is right, though, 
If Descartes is right that we all have an equal amount of good sense, then there's never any reason to punish me for getting the wrong answer. If you can look at my work and see that I have made a mistake, if you are capable of understanding that mistake, then I should be as well. If we have equal good sense, then any mistake you are capable of understanding, I should also be capable of understanding. That doesn't mean I'll see it. That doesn't mean I'll spot it on my own, but you should at least be able to explain it to me. And so now, rather than punishing me for getting the wrong answer, you should explain to me where I've made my mistake, and now I should be able to recognize it, and as soon as I recognize my mistake, it just stops being mine. I change my mind. I will then change and adopt uh, a better method and the better answer. But that's to say, if Descartes is right, then we shouldn't be fighting about answers. We should be talking about method. We should be comparing and showing each other how we get to our answers, and that's where criticism is possible. That's where philosophy is possible. You and I take a look at how we get our answers, and we figure out how we've come to a wrong answer or different answers. And if I see that you've made a mistake, I should be able to explain it in a way that you'll understand it. And if you see that I've made a mistake, you should be able to do the same thing. There's no reason to kill each other about the answers. There's no reason to get upset or punish each other. We should just be able to have a civilized conversation about how we get there, and you and I should be able to come to agreement.